Hi, my name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services, and I will provide you a short survey result on the industry trends 2024. We've been doing this survey as part of our annual client survey by year end 23, and we covered about 3,700 people to whom we addressed the survey. It was an online survey. We received a response rate of 6%, and that gives us a quite solid basis for drawing conclusions. The first thing which I want to underline is uh, just to frame where we're coming from. Vector, one of the leading providers of software, automotive software, tools, lifecycle management. And we also do have a branch which is on consulting, doing worldwide projects, and therefore also literally knowing what's under the hood because we practice software and we also support software development and help clients to evolve towards software-defined companies. Now, one of the key questions which we analyze each year is about what are the short-term and the mid-term challenges. In this chart, you see the short-term challenges on the horizontal axis and the mid-term or long-term, as you might perceive it, challenges on the vertical axis. Difference is primarily a short-term challenge is something which hits you right away. A mid- or long-term challenge is the things which come a bit later. Or simply speaking, the one is operational, the other one more strategic. Looking to this pattern, we see that competences have the biggest short-term impact. And that means the lack of competence. Lack of competence directly means a lack of innovation because we don't have enough people available. We don't have enough competence available to innovate our products. It also you know, impacts cost quality because we are not able to improve as fast as we should. Just think about redesign, refactoring, reducing technical debt, being faster, being more efficient, improving your test strategies. All that needs competence. Without the competence, you will not be able to really compete. And that is exactly what we will now look a bit more in detail. So we are asking what are the major business threats? And we see on that picture a clear group. The first four from the top build one group, which dominate. Getting products to the market with right quality and speed, this is obviously a target which all of us have. We are in a global competition and we need to be fast. The competition is growing. That was a surprising number two. Not so much that we don't know that competition is growing, but it has moved up very much compared to previous years. And then we have immediately the competence aspect, lack of people and competence. It's not about numbers. I mean, we are not Excel crunching here. It's really about having the competences at place. And many customers tell us, look, we are currently in this difficult situation that competences need to grow. We have an amount of new technologies hitting our products that can be Gen AI, that can be new powertrain moving from combustion to elect electric powertrain, that can be cloud services edge computing, the convergence of the enterprise IT and the product IT, many, many challenges. But at the same time, some of these uh, senior managers all tell, also tell me we have become complacent, especially in Western Europe. On the one side, we rely very much on our perceived strong products, but we don't really consider that there is an erosion in the different markets. There are new competitors, for instance, from Asia. There are a lot of new challenges coming and there's certainly no place for being complacent. And that means we need a continuous competence growth. And that brings me to number four because complacency also means that we are not really prepared for change. The catchword these days and not only this year, but already the past few years is what we call VUCA. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. 
And these four words characterize one thing which you need very urgently, which is we live in an uncertain world. We are continuously challenged with change, with threats which might come around because of, as we have seen some years ago, the pandemic or economic conditions or political uh, changes. And the one thing which we need is resilience. Resilience does not mean to be fatalistic or to not do anything. Resilience means adaptivity, that we are adaptive. It's like our operating systems. I mean, operating systems in the past were static. They might have been real time, but today they are all adaptive. They change their behaviors. They upload software from the cloud. They download services and bring them towards the customers. And this kind of resilience, this kind of adaptiveness, this is what we need to grow. Now, if you look into project risk, the picture is not really surprising. You all know this magic triangle of the project management, cost, quality, time. And the one thing which has unfortunately not really changed is that we have to cope with changing and unclear requirements. Uncertainty, remember VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, will not stop in front of our products and requirements. And that means also we have to prepare for this volatility. At the same time, we realize we have poor management capabilities and we have insufficient competencies. So here is, we have to work on training. We have to grow competences. Each one of us and we as companies have to grow the competences inside our company. The changes are manifold, and I've grouped them here in several sectors. I think the top part is most important. Companies used to have a steady evolution. With many of my customers, I do road mapping process, and road mapping is very important, but we have also to get more into a mode of disruptive value generation. What do I mean with that? That we, are not anymore able to foresee what will be next year in terms of market product technology, competition, etc. We have to be prepared to really deliver right away those things which are demanded or even better, we create that demand. And that must be disruptive because those who evolve continuously will not anymore get this high payment which we were used to. Competitiveness means that we have disruptive innovation, that we bring new things. And we consider continuously, how can we bring new things to the world? On the competence side, it's the classic split of here IT or cloud and here embedded, which is completely gone. We talk about the convergence of enterprise and product IT. And engineering, which now summarizes what I said before, needs to be entrepreneurial, that means each one of us has to think in terms of how can we contribute to value. This is, by the way, an agile principle. I mean, agile already introduced that each one is really responsible for the fate, for the evolution, for the success of the company. We cannot finger point to somebody else as we like to do. It's not our managers. It's not the government. It's not bad circumstances. It's us. We have the power, we have the guts, we have the competences, we have to deliver. And that means we need to have this VUCA driven resilience. And I say deliberately driven because we have the volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity, and we need to be resilient as part of our behavior, personality, and culture. Now we have, of course, also a lot of technology changes, and I'm not going to read everything. But one thing which is obvious is that generative AI, Gen AI, is changing the landscape a lot. Not so much because we haven't been working with AI and ML in the past years, much more because we have now tools available to really drive productivity. For instance, we've been working to use Gen AI for Tara, for cybersecurity, in order to identify immediately what would be impacts of a change, what would be the necessary um, vulnerability checks and how could we identify not only the threats, but also the security measures. In these domains, 
Gen AI brings a huge value. It also brings a value, for instance, with traceability. For many years, we have been fighting inconsistencies from the requirements to the design to the test. With Gen AI, we are now able to connect these deliverables and therefore also achieve a better consistency, which is quite relevant, for instance, if you think about a safety case, which applies to many industries. And again, since we have this convergence of product and enterprise IT, most of our products these days have functional safety risk. And that's not only medical with implants or automotive with cars and vehicles or industrial automation with robots or aerospace or rail trains, etc. It's pretty much all. Most of the IT systems today have an impact on functional safety because there are humans around and humans depend on these systems and increasingly also trust these systems. And that means we need to make sure that the systems are secure and safe. Let's move into what it means for ourselves because our major notion was that we have competitiveness because of good competence or lack of competence. And that's really the whole challenge. Is our competence sufficient to stay competitive? And the industry trends, which are typically based around what we call ACES, autonomy convergence of product enterprise IT, ecology, green products and services, means that we also see business impacts on the way we are working. We have much more software-driven business models than ever before. Software is the driver of almost any products which are delivered, even in domains where we were not really thinking about it, like agriculture. Ecosystems get fluid, and we will have much more partnerships, ad hoc partnerships, long-term partnerships, but we, know, we are aware that we cannot do everything ourselves. The key differentiators would be software and services, not any more tangible product. It's the flexibility. I said earlier, adaptiveness. Our software is characterized because that they are adaptive to changes, changing requirements. If remember, the major challenge with project is changing requirements. We cannot simply say, well, I would like to have frozen requirements. This is a myth. It's impossible. Requirements are changing. The rate is about 3-5% per month. What is really important is that we are able to cope with change. Smartphone-like adaptive and flexible feature delivery, this is exactly what is behind this changing requirements, that we are able to make the changes without immediately changing hardware platforms. And finally, I spoke about cybersecurity and safety. We are in a growing demand for governments and liability. And it holds also for novel technologies like AI. And that's also why we, as AI experts, recommend to our customers, for instance, to use their LLMs, their models, only on-premise, not in the cloud. And there are many such guidance which we can give. And be aware that governance and liability also means that you think about the risks and how you mitigate the risks. For your own competence means to grow your enterprise IT and product IT competence along the convergence that you know both. Those with a CS major have to learn about embedded real-time and um, the engineering. The engineers have to learn about computer science, informatics, and what means to really have a, a big IT system. Master software and systems engineering. In the past, it might have been sufficient to know about software. Today, we talk about systems, interfaces, the different dependencies, the different real-time aspects of our systems. Foster HI learning and distributed collaboration. That's a major topic. One of our customers um, in this survey make a very explicit statement and that is shared by many who I know and said, if you are not able to manage global teams, we are not able to manage our company. We are today always in a situation that we have distributed teams. Some distributed teams work across continents, time zones. Others are distributed just because people work from home office or other flexible work spaces. But everybody of us is in a distributed situation and we have to be able to work with that 
and we have to be able ourselves to learn in an agile mode. And that is, if you think about the agile principles, continuity, that we continuously learn. In agile, we call it retrospective. Ask yourself each single day, what did you learn today? That's your personal retrospective, which I recommend. And of course, improve your productivity. I mean, those topics which we learn in school and university, they remain as basics valid. But with Gen AI and a global competition, it also means to continuously ask ourselves, how can we do better? It's not anymore as it used to be. We need to think in terms of how can we use technology to automate what can be automated? How can we put our limited time on what really matters to generate lasting value? In order to get more on this kind of information, I invite you to our Vector Forum 24, which is, as before, always on the Thursdays in May and June, one hour, mid of the day for European. That is, for Americans, it's morning. For Asia, it's evening. Everybody can participate. It's one hour, one topic, one speaker, which also allows to ask your questions. It's interactive, and it's free. So register. You have here our... CR and you can directly get into this also by www.vector.com slash forum24. With that, I want to conclude. I would hope that you have some takeaways about the challenges, <clears throat> but even more important also about your personal resolutions, grow your competences continuously, grow your resilience, don't be fatalistic. I mean, there's a lot of sunshine out there, which we really can see advances from AI to this convergence of product enterprise IT. There's a lot to do, and we are in the core of, on the center of this highly disruptive innovation. It's just a question, do we want to continuously move forward or do we stagnate? In the latter case, that would be difficult in the first case. We take our different chances and turn them into value. That is where we have to go. Good success and hope to see you in one of our seminars or in other projects which we might do together. Thank you.